and welcome back to Ringside Report Radio. Dave Simon and Kevin the Big Tuna McHugh with you uh, right now, joined by Steven Seiler fighting November 17th at UFC 154. Uh, Steven, how are you feeling three weeks away from your big fight? Yeah, I'm excited, man. I just can't wait to get back in the cage. And, you know, you're, you're taking on uh, Darren Elkins, uh, a guy who's done very well for himself on a three-fight win streak. You're on a three-fight win streak. Um, how do you evaluate your opponent? Uh, you know, where do you see his best skills lie? Uh, his best skills definitely is wrestling um, and his chin. I, I was at his last fight when he fought Diego. And, man, that kid, I mean, he ran through everything. Diego, you know, hit him with a lot of hard, hard shots. And uh, Darren never stopped coming. So, you know, he definitely has a good chin. And if you see the rest of his fights, you know, his wrestling is really, really talented. So uh, I'm looking forward, you know, to getting to the ring with him and giving it a battle. And obviously, the majority of your victories uh, via submission, uh, a guy you know like Darren Elkins, a wrestler, might be difficult to take down. How, how much are you focusing on on taking Darren Elkins down, uh, as opposed to maybe uh, trying to stand up and and fight a you know stand up battle with him? Um, you know, ever since I've gotten into the UFC, I've actually uh, adjusted more to a stand up fighter. I mean, I love just standing and banging and trying to make the, the fights a lot more exciting instead of, you know, just laying on my back like I usually did and waiting for a submission. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to stand with him. I'm hoping to be trading shots and, you know, get him my tie plum and hit him with a lot of knees. And what made you yeah. decide to kind of change that game plan? Was it, was it an experience on the Ultimate Fighter? Was it just uh, the bright lights in the UFC? What made you kind of decide to change your style? Um, you know, I could always fall back on my jiu-jitsu game if something you know, goes wrong. Uh, when I fought Gambino, he rocked me. I went right back to the ground. But for the most part, you know, I got better stand-up because I've been working on it a lot more. So I got, you know, Coach John Hackleman and Coach Jason Murlick working with my stand-up every day, um, you know, making sure I feel confident when it gets to fight time to be able to stand there and trade and, you know, use my skills. So, you know, ever since that happened, I just, you know, I want to use it. Now, you mentioned your coach, uh, John Hackleman and Jason Mertlick. Um, how is that working? Is Hackleman with you in Utah as well? Is that is that full-time in Utah with, with Hackleman and Jason? Uh, Jason's full-time in Utah. Our coach is, uh, Hack is out in California. Um, I didn't get a chance to this time. Usually we, uh, you know, spend some of the training camp here in Utah. Then we, or at least I uh, will spend some of it in Utah. Then I'll go to California for a little bit and head back to Utah to finish it off. Um you know, Ramsey for the, you know, he's out in California right now working, you know, most of his camp out in California. So depends on which one we want to, uh, go more. But, you know, I figured this one, this was camp to stay in Utah and I kind of got it on, you know, only seven weeks notice instead of, you know, more than I prefer. So I just wanted to keep it out here with the altitude and, uh, just keep training hard out here. Now, Steven, you mentioned in your last, your last fight, you, um, you fought Joey Gambino. You handed him his first loss. I, is that kind of uh, a point of pride for you to kind of dethrone an undefeated fighter? Um, you know, I did that my first fight too with Josh Clopton. You know, I like, I mean, I love being the first mark on the record. They actually, people notice it a lot more. You know, they go on this big streak and they see the loss. But uh, really, any victory, you know, feels good, especially in the UFC. Now, you're riding a three fight win streak, so is your opponent, Darren Elkins. A, a, what does it mean for you to keep your streak? going and improve it to four and to snap his his win streak um and means everything i mean i want i want to get up to uh you know eventually a title shot i want to you know stay in contention i don't want to fall off that ladder and have to work my way back up so you know if i'm you know climbing already why you know set, get fall down off the ladder and, instead of just keep on climbing do you think that uh, you're a few fights away from um, a title shot? Like, in your opinion, is it you know three fights, five fights away? Um, it really doesn't matter to me. I mean, I I'm, I know I'm going to get it eventually as long as I keep winning fights. You know, until then I'll just keep on you know beating up whoever they put in front of me and hopefully we put on some wars and win some bonuses. Now, do you see this fight with Darren Elkins as a step up in in competition now in the UFC? I do, actually. I think uh, he has more overall skills than the people I've fought so far. I mean, I think his takedowns are by far the best, and um, I think he also has the best chin, so he'll be able to stand and trade if he wants to. So I, I think he's the most complete fighter I've fought so far in the UFC. Now, you've been fighting for 
a long time, but you're a, you know a relatively young guy. You started fighting at at 18 years old, right? Yeah, I started fighting uh, just here locally. They had a little TV show that they uh, would show, you know, late night, Sunday nights. And uh, my friend got me to MMA. You know, I didn't really train or anything, but he did. And the fact that they had a TV show and, you know, my friend would beat up on me every day. I was like, why not just fight somebody, you know, on TV, just get some recognition. Um, I didn't get any training at all. My first 12 fights, actually, I never stepped into a gym or anything. I just kind of did it just, you know, hoping to be on Utah, Utah local TV. And so I just went in and, uh, with no knowledge of anything. And, you know, I started out five and seven, you know, which is not a very good record at all. And, uh, you know, I was more having fun more than actually thinking of it as a career. And then what changed? Uh, that same friend who got me to MMA, who actually, he was also just in the UFC, uh, Jorge Lopez. He finally took me aside and, you know, told me if I'm going to, if I'm going to fight, I better take it serious instead of just, you know, doing it for fun. You know, I got to respect the sport. And uh, he took me to a gym, and I started training jiu-jitsu for a while. And, you know, since then, I've gone 16-2. and two. And, uh, you know, you've gone on a hell of a run. You were on the Ultimate Fighter uh, and now undefeated in the UFC. Uh, how was that Ultimate Fighter experience like for you? Um, You know, it was very uh, interesting for sure, living in the house with, 15 other dudes who have the same goal as me, but they also had different personality. So, uh, for the most part, I just laid, I, you guys probably noticed I laid low and, uh, majority of the time I, I was just sleeping. Actually, Mayhem called me Sleepy C because every single time he came over, I was passed out, uh, just to make the experience go, pa- uh, by quicker because I knew I wasn't fighting, you know, anytime soon. And it was six weeks in uh, a show. I didn't fight to the fifth week. So, the majority of the time, I just wanted to train and sleep to just make it go by faster. Yeah, just kind of passed the time, right? How was Mayhem as a coach? Mayhem was actually a really good coach. He, uh, you know, he, he definitely cared about his his uh, team. Uh, he, you know, he'd come over, spend time with us, and, you know, make sure the time went by faster because really we had nothing better to do. I mean, it's a big mansion with stuff to do, but we got, you know, we did it all in a couple of days, and the rest of the time we were like, just bored. So when him and uh, the rest of the coaches would come by, it'd make the, the time spent there more uh Definitely more entertaining. And After what, meeting uh, Jason Mayhem Miller, um, what were your thoughts on his uh, problematic situation that occurred following his release from the USC? Uh, I, I, it didn't shock me. I think he's that's just Jason being Jason, Coach Mayhem. He uh, he's a very entertaining free spirit, and that's just the kind of guy he is. So um, <laughs> I was shocked to hear about the church thing, but at the same time. Um, you know, like I said, it's just mayhem being mayhem. And now, uh, one of your teammates, Rad Martinez, just picked up a victory uh, at Bellator recently. Were you training with Rad? I trained with Rad. Uh, he's actually my main training partner. You know, I'm with him. You know, I, I feel I'm, more, I'm with him more than I'm with my wife. <laughs> How much time have we spend on the cage going with each other? Where did he get that name, Rad? Is that is that his legit name? That's his legit name. That's his, that's his uh, growing up name. Wow. You ever ask him about that? Like, where does that come from? I never have. I just know Radley Martinez, so, and Rad for short. So I just, um, maybe I'll do it on uh, Thursday. I'll talk to him about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like it. I think it's a great name, and he looked very good uh, at Bellator. I mean, how good is Rad? No, it fits him perfectly. Now, the kid's a brick house. He, one of the best wrestlers I've ever been with. Actually, not one of them. He is the best wrestler I've ever been with. He's Super, super, super strong. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll get in the clinch and he'll land the harder, powerful shots every time. Kid's got talent for sure. He's not really a kid. He's 34, so he, you know, he's been doing this for a long time, whether it be wrestling or MMA. So um, I have no doubt he's going to be winning that Delta tournament. I'm looking forward to seeing it. 